I'm primarily an observational astronomer and my particular field of study for the past 25-30 years have been comets and asteroids, small rocky and icy bodies that orbit our sun in our solar system. I've worked on asteroids and comets all my life, but in the early 1990s I went to visit Meteor Crater in Arizona, where 50,000 years ago just a small asteroid hit the Arizona desert. About the same time, or just slightly before, it had finally been established that a large asteroid impact had actually played an important part in the extinction of the dinosaurs. And putting the two together, I realised that one day I'd like to work in that field. And it's just developed from there to, to today, where we find Queen's playing an important role in these major international studies. The vast majority of asteroids and comets out there that I've studied in my career actually never come anywhere near the Earth. But if they get within, oh, about 50 million kilometres of us, which is still a fair distance, then we class them as a near-Earth object. If they can come any much closer than that, and if they're a certain size, we call them a potentially hazardous object. And those are the ones that we generally concentrate on. If a, a large asteroid, or even a medium, small-sized asteroid, were to hit us today, that would cause or could cause potentially devastating consequences, for, certainly in the impact region for, for humanity and possibly even on a global scale. We're very good now at picking up uh, even relatively medium-sized near-Earth objects, half a kilometre across or even smaller, but even with the planned telescopes uh, that we have on the drawing board, we would not be able to pick up all the small asteroids out there. And that's why we were taken by surprise on February the 15th in 2013 when a small asteroid entered the atmosphere near the Russian city of Chelyabinsk and exploded with a force of 500 kilotons. Now, to put that into context, that's 10 times the energy of the Hiroshima atomic bomb. And although it mostly vaporised and all we were left with are small fragments of that asteroid, such as this, the shock wave from that injured 1,600 people. And that's just a small object. A larger one, if it impacted the ground, could cause significant devastation. The PanStars project is a, a large telescope on the island of Maui in Hawaii that's been set up really as the world's largest, largest digital camera to survey the skies and look for things out there now astronomers at Queen's, including myself, realised several years ago that this was a potentially a very powerful project for our fields of research. And so we joined with uh, some other UK institutions, those in Germany and several others in the US to club together and operate this telescope to it at the fullest advantage. And what that allows us to do in the field of NEOs is discover these objects, track them and get advanced warning if any of that may come near our planet. What we've been concentrating on over the past year or so is making sure we accurately measure their brightnesses as well so that we have a good idea of their size and therefore whether or not we really need to regard them as a threat. Another project we're involved with at Queen's is NeoShield. This is a European funded project looking at the day sometime, hopefully far in the future, when we will find one of these objects on a collision course because it will happen one day and what kind of technology could we build to deflect the asteroid so that it missed the Earth rather than impacting. We're still only part way through this project but already we've got several concepts, concepts on the drawing board and by the end of this three and a half, four year project we should be on a much firmer footing knowing what we can do and perhaps unfortunately what we can't do with an asteroid if we find one coming our way. In research fields like this, where we have a global collaboration spanning many countries, there are many benefits to Queen's and outside Queen's. First of all, of course, it demonstrates that Queen's is a centre of research excellence in these fields, and we are valuable players in the international community in these and other scientific areas. Also, there's a wider impact. We make great efforts to communicate what we're doing to, to the general public, and we hope that inspires school children and, and young students to come in and learn about what we're doing and sets them hopefully on the path towards scientific careers, perhaps in engineering, mathematics or even in pure science such as physics and astrophysics because the rewards are endless and uh, it's an exciting thing to do.